What's up everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Da Vinci Cases. Alright, so the way this works is we've got a clinical case followed by a board style question. So we're going to go through the question stem, point out the relevant clinical findings, take a look at the question and the answer choices, and then kind of divert for a minute and go through the relevant concepts to answering the question. Then we'll come back and apply those concepts that we went over to answering the question. Hey everyone, my name is Sydney Weir and I'm a fourth year medical student at UAB here Sink School of Medicine. Um, I'm just going to be walking you through dermatology case two, so let's go ahead and get into it. So we have a 50-year-old male presenting to clinic with painful blisters. He noticed one or two blisters on his legs a few weeks ago, but decided to come in now because they have worsened and spread. On exam, the patient is ill-appearing with several scattered flaccid bulla present on the right and left calves that extend down to the ankles. A thorough examination reveals similar erosions within the mouth. And then the top layer of the patient's skin shears with slight applied pressure. So the question here is, what component of the skin is affected by this condition? And our answer choices are hemidesmosomes, ecadherin, intermediate filaments, integrins, and desmoglein 1 and or 3. So let's go ahead and break down this question stem. So starting off, we have a 50-year-old male, so an older adult and they are appearing with painful blisters that are described as flaccid bulla in the skin as well as the mucosal surfaces. So this is all super important in helping us differentiate our two top diseases on our differential. Further, the patient is ill appearing. So this is just sort of hinting to us that this condition maybe has some systemic effects rather than just being isolated to the skin. And then further walking through, so we have a Nikolsky sign positive. Um, so that's just indicated by the sentence here. The top layer of the patient's skin shears with applied pressure. So by taking your finger and rubbing it over the surface of the skin, we're either inducing the skin to come off or to form a blister. And that's a positive Nikolsky sign. So all of these key points we just discussed sort of point us through two diseases, either pemphigus vulgaris or bullus pemphigoid. And these two are going to be the top on our differential here. So let's talk more about these diseases. Pemphigus vulgaris is a life-threatening blistering disorder, and it's characterized by acantholysis, which just means the separation of keratinocytes that result in the formation of intraepithelial blisters in the mucous membranes and the skin. So we commonly see this in older adults. And if you recall from immunology, um, this is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, which just, which just means it's mediated by antibodies. So getting into the mechanism of pemphigus vulgaris, IgG antibodies attack desmoglein 1 and or 3. And this is what causes the appearance of flaccid intraepithelial bulla that form either in the oral mucosa or um, the skin or, or both. And classically with pemphigus vulgaris, we'll go ahead and see that Nikolsky sign, which was just that um, easy shearing of the skin with applied pressure. And oftentimes they'll go ahead and do a biopsy to diagnose pemphigus vulgaris. And when they do immunofluorescent staining, they'll see a reticular pattern around epidermal cells. So contrasting pemphigus vulgaris to bullous pemphigoid. So bullous pemphigoid is another autoimmune blistering disorder. However, it's less severe than pemphigus vulgaris. And now I mentioned that pemphigus vulgaris is a life-threatening um, blistering disorder. And what makes it life-threatening is that um, patients can get these bulla within their airway and it actually can compromise their airway. So that's just an important consideration of this um, disease here. So going back to bullous pemphigoid, um, just like with pemphigus, you know, it's commonly seen in older adults. It's also a type two hypersensitivity reaction mediated by IgG. However, in bullous pemphigoid, instead of desmoglein one and three being affected, it actually attacks the hemidesmosomes. And I'll go ahead and show you all a picture of what I'm talking about in a second when we're talking about hemidesmosomes and desmoglein. 
Um, but going further with bullus, we'll see tense blisters compared to the flaccid blisters, pemphigus. Um, you won't get any oral involvement and you'll have a negative Nikolsky sign. So these are all really important points to help you differentiate between these two um, blistering disorders. And then when they do the biopsy of bullus um, and they do that immunofluorescent staining, they'll see a linear pattern at the epidermal dermal junction. So instead of um, you know, having a pattern that surrounds all the epidermal cells, this will more so look like a kind of like a line on staining. Here's an example of the epithelial cell junctions that they'll likely test you on um, in step one. And so you can see there's the four major types of epithelial cell junctions. And we'll just go ahead and start off with the one on the apical surface of the cells. So that's the tight junction, which makes up the zonula occludens. And it's composed of two um, types of protein, claudin and occludin. And what the tight junc junction does is it prevents paracellular movement of solutes, so it prevents um, solutes from going between the cells. And then here we've got the adherence junction, which makes up the zonula adherens. And what this does is it forms a belt between the two cells and it connects the actin cyto cytoskeletons within the cells to the cadherins um, within the actual junction itself. And What's a good to remember is that if you lose, ca lose cadherins within the adherence junction or within the desmosomes, um, you're actually prone to metastasis. So you'll likely hear about that in certain types of cancers. Then moving to desmosomes. Um, so you can see here, it's still um, made of cadherins just like in adherence junctions, but the difference between the two is that desmosomes connects intermediate elements within the cells and it's more integral to the structure of the cell. Um, and that actually autoantibodies in Pemphigus vulgaris target desmosomes, specifically desmoglein one and or three. So that's super high yield to remember. Then moving to gap junctions, you can see it's made of connexin. And the purpose of this is basically to create a channel that allows electrical and chemical communication between the cells. And then lastly, we've got hemidesmosomes at the bottom on the basal surface, surface of the cell. And these are important in connecting keratin in the basal cells to the underlying basement membrane. And what's really important to note here is that autoantibodies in bullous pemphigoid actually attack hemidesmosome. And that's what get, causes the loss of adhe adherence from the cells to the basement membrane. Um, another thing that I wanted to just point out here, this protein here, integrin, is very important in maintaining integrity of the basal lateral membrane by binding um, collagen, laminin, and fibronectin in the basement membrane. Um, so I would just keep that in mind. It's pretty important structure within the hemidesmosome. Going back to the question, um, our answer is going to be desmoglein 1 and or 3 because this question stem points us to the diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris. And the reason being is just, um, you know, the demographic, the actual physical exam findings of having flaccid villa that affect uh, the skin and the mucous membranes. And then also um, we have a positive Nikolsky sign, which all fits the description of pemphigus. And just going through the other answers, so hemidesmosomes, if you remember, it's affected by, by um, IgG in bullous pemphigoid. And then ecadherin, so these are um, some of the components that make up adherence junctions and desmosomes. And if you actually lose that, um, you can facilitate metastasis. So this is commonly affected in cancers. And intermediate filaments. So these are just that structural membrane protein that interacts with desmosomes to promote stability. And then lastly, integrins are a membrane protein that maintains integrity of the basal lateral membrane. So that concludes this case. Um, here's just my information. If you have any questions or would like to see a specific case talked about, please feel free to reach out. 
Um, we didn't have any images included in this presentation. However, you will see we are gonna be including images from this UAB Digital Dermatology Atlas. And it's a free resource that just provides images of common skin conditions across diverse skin types. So please feel free to check that out. Um, it's a great educational resource. All right, well, thank you so much and I'll see you for the next case. All right, that's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out all the DaVinci Cases videos available on our YouTube channel and our website, dviacademy.com. The PDF notes for every DaVinci Cases is also available on our website. Also be sure to check out our podcast, The DaVinci Hour, where we interview attendings and residents across medicine to learn more about their experiences, their specialties, and to get their insights on navigating a career in medicine. You can find The DaVinci Hour podcast on our website or any platform where podcasts are found. Lastly, you can find all of our video courses and corresponding outline format books on our website. Don't forget to use the discount code DC20 for 20% off.